Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM20 story, A Wandering Dork with me, Daniel. It's season 3, episode 6, and today we're back for our penultimate episode of the season. It's getting towards squeaky bum time in the title race, and we've got a massive game away at Ebbsfleet today. Another side near the top of the table that will certainly provide a stern test. As you can see, we're missing one of our key centre-halves on international duty too, and we're just two days from the transfer window closing. So it's all systems go across the board at this football club both on the pitch and off it as well. We start on the screen of Matthew Smith and there's a very important reason for that. Been a really solid midfielder for us this season. A big money signing and one we tried to get permanently but I can confirm he has agreed a loan deal for next season as well. So he will be staying here as will Fabio Lopez. So whichever league we're in, we're certainly going to have a strong squad in those two positions. But it's also to avoid any spoilers of course before we go and have a look at what's been happening since the last episode. And a chance for me of course to say thank you for watching as always. If you are enjoying the series please do put a thumbs up on it. If you've missed any of the action so far, you can find a link to the whole playlist in the eye above, in addition to the new series The Head Coach and our FM20 beats to save with Luton Town as well. And if you're new to the channel and enjoying the daily FM20 content, then subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. We've got our two long-term stories rotating each day now, and a few special challenges lined up as well. But let's get back to the home screen to see what's going on. It's very tense at the top of the National League table. Considering we were expected to avoid relegation at the start, we're now embroiled in a title race with seven games to go. We've gone three points clear of Chesterfield since the last episode. They've started to drop off and we found a little bit of form again but this is probably the toughest test we've had in about a month and I think if we are going to falter at some point this is probably the start of a bad run if it's going to happen. The nerves towards the finish line combined with playing a really good side they've got plenty to play for to secure their own playoff spot and they're trying to secure that top five space so they can get the home advantage in the first playoff game so there's certainly not going to be an easy game here with a few sides chasing on their tail. But let's go and have a look at the schedule for what's been happening since the last episode. You can see we're in absolutely remarkable form and by contrast Chesterfield just starting to drop off slightly we'll go and have a look at how they've been doing they lost heavily at Sutton at the start of the month and drew a lowly Solihull Mars in the last league game they've also got to focus on the FA Trophy so that could be a benefit for us actually although if they do get to the final it might give them a bit of confidence so I don't know which way that one's going to go either but you can see in the last seven games we've really got back to our form of last year goals galore going in and we've not actually been too bad at the back either so following the Chester field match we drew one all against Hartlepool William Hondemark came and saved the day another good goal from outside the box from him in an otherwise poor home performance then away at Kettering we won 3-2 Cameron Archer saved us off the bench we threw him on at 2-1 down with 25 to go and he turned the game on its head a brilliant performance from the substitute then at home to Macclesfield a comfortable 3-0 win Terrell Whitaker back to form with a hat trick and then a 4-0 victory at Solihull Moors Whitaker again amongst the scorers as well as Tom Rich Richards getting a rare outing. Matthew Smith scored in that one as well, someone we featured at the start of this episode, and away to Barrow he was just as good, setting up both goals for Giorgi and Adoma. So you can see from here we've got so many different people contributing. Whitaker and Archer with the goals against Torquay. The side we managed in our similar series last year with amazing success throughout. It was a fantastic story and I really enjoyed it. But of course we had a professional job to do in that one. Then a 5-0 win at home to Halifax who helped us with a second minute red card. They're bottom of the league and it's quite easy to see why. They really didn't look like a good team at all. Cameron Archer with a brace as did Hondemark and Fabio Lopez with an early goal too. And then a 3-2 win at home to Woking in the last game. All of the goals coming in the first half an hour. Adoma, Presley and Whelan for us. Presley ending a really long goal drought. And Whelan another showing that everyone's contributing. So many different goal scorers in the last couple of months. A red card helped us out late on in that one. Just as they were starting to get back into it. And just three days later today we face Ebbsfleet. Knowing we've got a really difficult test on our hands. We're missing Bashir Humphreys who's gone on international duty with Uganda. He's probably our best centre half half on paper and he might be leaving the club pretty soon as we can't agree a proper contract with him so it could be the last game he's played for the club. Two days till the window shuts we know we've got to be careful some big National League teams sniffing around him and there's also some Football League ones in there as well so hopefully he'll hold out for them and it means he'll be with us for the rest of this season. So a massive game coming up today and a few more towards the end of the year as well I'm hoping we'll come back for the final day against Chester or maybe the last two with Barnet as well and just be able to 
celebrate a chance to win the title. It would be a remarkable success back to back. The first season we of course narrowly missed out on the playoffs. Last year we won the league but we expected to be up there. This year has completely come out of the blue. We were expecting one more season of consolidation. So a first season in the National League to remember. The dynamics are looking pretty healthy as well. So everything's going really well on and off the pitch and I think we could be in with a chance of winning it. Of course, we got outplayed by Chester in the last episode, so we certainly don't want to write them off yet. But let's go and get into this game away at Ebbsfleet and see if we can put on a special performance. The favourites are us, but only just. A very close game, both sides missing a player on international duty. Wet, windy weather away at Ebbsfleet, and they're getting over 2,000 through the gate today. They've got a good manager and a really decent side, and we've got pretty much everyone fit as well. But a couple missing out, Harbottle and Whelan, not fit enough to take their places on the bench. Means we're a little bit short at centre half. O'Dwyer coming in for a very rare appearance. He's quite good in the air, so I might put him on that right hand side just to try and give us a threat from set pieces. I'm not sure what Lomas is like on the left. He's never had to play there for us, but I guess we'll find out the hard way today. Though the rest of the side pretty much names itself. We've got Rams bottom in goal. Vaughan and Zamura are the fullbacks. Lomas and O'Dwyer at centre half. Might be his first start in the league, actually. He's made one start before this season, so a really big occasion for him him and we haven't even got Harbottle fit on the bench if we need him so he is going to have to play the full 90 minutes. We've got Hunter Mark and Smith in midfield, a partnership which we now know will continue next year and then Adoma and Lopez out on the wings with Presley and Whitaker up front together. We've got Whitaker in goal scoring form, Presley just ended a goal drought and Cameron Archer being a super sub off the bench. There's plenty of positive things going on here. We've got Giorgi and Richards about as well as well as Gallagher and Broom so a few reinforcements if we need them on the bench and he's probably not quite as strong a substitutes bench as normal. So let's get into this game. It's a 4-2-3-1 for Ebbsfleet and we know it's going to be one of the toughest games of the season. At this stage everyone starts to falter and we've just got to make sure we keep our heads above Chesterfield. So we're going to tell the lads to pick up where they left off. Nick Haycock getting all the team talks right at the moment. Since he's joined the club, we've barely lost the game. And we do have to thank him greatly for that. Into the first half, let's see if we can get the win. Five minutes gone and we're yet to see a highlight. Well, half an hour gone, we're yet to see a highlight. But big breaking news at the bottom of the screen. York winning against Chesterfield and they're suddenly two quick goals. But York got one of them, they stay 2-1 up. And as it stands, we're going four points clear. Despite a really poor first half performance here. It's one of our trickiest games in the running, so I guess a draw wouldn't be a disaster. If we can draw this and Chesterfield lose at home, I'd certainly then fancy us to win the league. They said to in the middle, though, Ebsfleet with a chance to end the first half in style. Back to Egan in the holding role. Eds are picking it up. They're not really going anywhere, but it only takes one pass to find a breakthrough. His goes straight to Zamura, though, and he can go long. Let's get one of the lads in, shall we? Short to Smith and out to Albert Adoma. It's just starting to decline physically now. I don't think he'll be good enough for next season. Long ball forward which O'Dwyer clears and over the top again from Ebb's fleet they're in one-on-one -on -one with Charman he's put it wide how did he miss that a clear-cut chance it goes down as but at a break we survive at nil-nil Chesterfield still losing 2-1 in their game but we're gonna tell the lads we're disappointed and we're gonna go to a positive mentality try and get a bit more of a foothold in this game they've got an injury the away side and they've bought on a new central midfielder but it's still them in the ascendancy they've got a throw on the right here which goes to the sub inside to Mondale the centre forward. Back to Reed again, the substitute. Inside to Edza, Honda marks close in, but he's not quite going to get there quick enough. To Reed in the middle again, they're keeping it nicely. No real tempo about their play, but it's out to Spooner, the overlapping right winger, and he's got it inside to Mondale. Crosses in the charm, and he's put it in. Thankfully, the offside flags up, though. We survive at nil-nil despite yet another scare, and we're going to have to go and demand more from the lads. Fingers crossed we can just find a goal from somewhere, as smash and grab will do on a day like this, as Chesterfield have got back on level terms in their game the referee evening up the penalty count well, 20 minutes to go. We've got a free kick with Smith. Into the box to Whitaker. Adoma nodded in, but he's offside this time. The flag's going up at every occasion. It's nil-nil. We're going to make some changes. Adoma's apprehensive. We'll replace him with young Giorgi. And Presley up front again, not in form. So Whitaker into the target man role. And the super sub Cameron Archer's coming on. Lomas struggling at left centre half. Not got any backup options though. So Hondamark goes into the deep line playmaker role. And Smith's going to be replaced by Jake Gallagher. They've got an extra man in midfield, so a ball winner's not going to hurt. 
And as you can see, Smith was really struggling in terms of condition. So let's see if these changes can give us a few fresh legs and a new lease of life for the last quarter of an hour. Still 0-0, a pretty decent result. Though Chesterfield now 4-2 up. Two quick goals from Ashley Seal there. And it means the gap at the top is down to just one. Chesterfield with a better goal difference as they've scored a fifth now as well. That'll really boost their confidence as we're held to a 0-0. A really dull game after all the excitement to see on camera. What an unfortunate moment to come back. We knew it was going to be one of the toughest tests and it's proven so there. And as we've barely seen a highlight, we'll show the Maidenhead one as well. They're battling for their lives down in 21st and we'll be back in a moment for that game as well. Okay, we're back for the second game away at Maidenhead. A side we really would be beating in normal circumstances, but they're fighting for their lives and we're scrapping as well. But with Chesterfield otherwise occupied in the FA Trophy, it's a chance for us to restore our lead at the top. So we could go four points clear if we win, and it's always great to have the points on the board. Chesterfield just drawing a few too many games, and we'll be hoping we can get them into that position again. Whitaker's on his own at the top of the scoring charts. A brilliant season he's had, and with the transfer window closing, we did get one. One more signing in just to bolster our squad for the last month or so. So the lone signing of Owen James from Oxford, a left winger and striker as well. A player that can offer us versatility and a bit of strength in depth in two positions. A good candidate to the substitutes bench for the last month just to give us a bit of strength if we need it off the bench. Having game changers is something that's underrated as Maidenhead are managed by Darius Vassell. That's caught me off guard there. He's got really decent attributes. As a young manager I think he's going to do really well there. But let's go back into this one. Bashir Humphrey still away on international duty but we are going to make a couple of changes to the side. Harbottle coming in for O'Dwyer. Is there anything else we can do? Whelan onto the bench. I want to get Owen James on there as well ideally so we might even take Gallagher off there or do we gamble and take Jack Broom off? Everyone's fit in the starting 11 so I think we're going to go for the same bar Harbottle and in fact I'm going to be bold. Owen James is coming in. Albert Adoma steps out for this one. They play the same position so it's not a problem but Owen James in on the left wing. So here's in for a Doma, Harbottle in for O'Dwyer who's out the squad completely. Aside from that exactly the same 16, just Tom Whelan on the bench in place of Richards. So let's get into this game against Maidenhead and see if we can extend our gap at the top to four. Well here we go then, 4-3-3 for Maidenhead, an experienced keeper in Arnold, Hayden Hollis at centre back, he's not a bad player either, and I think that's Jake Cassidy up front, he's a decent pro, not the best finisher, but works really hard and leads the line well. So let's go and encourage the team, Nick Haycock's often the man who's right, and after a decent result away at Ebb's Fleet, we really need to turn on the style in this one. Maidenhead expected to be chasing the bottom four, so let's keep an eye on their end of the table, while hoping we can go and get the victory. So Maidenhead head corner early on though, into Hollis down the heath, great block by Hondemark on the line, and then by Zamura again, two off the line in two seconds there, and Whittaker's through on goal from the counter, brilliant challenge and it's cleared away at right back, hoofed away for a frame by the Maidenhead defence Brown looks like he's really badly injured there, although he has carried on so it can't be disastrous, we're going to go positive and get on the front foot, as we look really shaky at the back there, it's another free kick or corner though, into the box towards Hollis, just beats him but he gets it again. Matthew Smith doing well to win it. Down the line towards Lopez. He's got two or three running off him if he can find them. One of them's James the new sign in. He goes through to Whitaker. Will it be an assist? Whitaker puts it wide. Snatched at that chance a little bit there. That really is quite unlike him. We're going to demand more from the lads as we've started really poorly. But Lopez nicks the ball high up there. And Presley holds it up well for Lomaz. Long ball over the top towards James. Brown heads away as far as Smith. The central midfielder getting it wide to James. The new sign in into Hunt the mark. What a save by Arnold. I was so sure he was just going to tap that in, but a flying Superman in goal stops it. It's behind for a corner, but we're not going to see it. And with a quarter of the game gone, it remains nil-nil. Well, it's a goal kick for the home side. Maidenhead go long with Arnold. One by Zamura, is it? No, he's lost out to Miller and now they're through on goal. Good effort just wide at the post. He couldn't direct it, but he gave us a scare. And with half an hour gone, he's still goalless. Another corner to Maidenhead. We've seen three of these already. And this one's in towards the back post. Unmarked and a brilliant save Ramsbottom. The second one's in from Jake Cassidy. This is turning into a nightmare and we're bottling the title race. We've wasted two clear-cut chances. And now we've conceded the lead to a relegation threatened side. This is an absolute disaster. Ethan Vaughan's got a throw in at right back. He finds Lopez but he's lost out as well. And now Mallon's through on the edge of the box. Just wide of the post. They're all over us. I do not know 
what is happening to our team. We've been so good for the last couple of months. We're completely collapsing here. Maiden out of her 12 shots. We're going to have to drop back to balance to half time. Presley hits the bar as we say that. James has a shot blocked on the line. And what an awful performance this has been. I don't know where on earth it's come from. We've got a throw on the left with Zamura. Long ball in towards Presley, the target man. Down but straight to Zamura again. His long ball headed to Lopez. Shoots on the volley, it's blocked. His pinball in there. Lomas down for Lopez again. He's challenged inside the area. Finds Presley 12 yards out. On the mark, shoots and hits the post. It's all happening here, but we just cannot score a goal. And it looks like Maidenhead will lead at half time. One minute to the break and we've got another highlight though. Meekins with a long ball forward. Harbottle heads away but it's only as far as Vassalo. He gets it back to the holding midfielder. Ethan Vaughan clears but it doesn't really find anyone. His second ball only finds Mallon the winger. Maidenhead have created so many chances here. Cassidy's been fouled in the box. What on earth is that from Lewis Lomas? We have cost ourselves the title on this day. It has all turned to a nightmare and we're throwing away the title and although we weren't expected at the start of the season, we're throwing it away why are we? Oh, he's hit the post and come back out. I thought he had hit the post and gone in. I wasn't really getting too excited. But he just bobbled back out and Ramsbottom picks it up. And that is very much the lifeline we needed at half time. So 1-0. These lads are going to get an absolute rollicking. We're going to aggressively tell them to show some desire. We're also going to go very attacking. Try and take out our defence here. Because they've been absolutely awful when they've been called upon. And we don't want them to have to do much in this half. Five minutes gone in the second half. We're yet to see any highlights. But changes won't be far away here as Whitaker loses the ball on halfway. It's Oafu at the centre half position. Long ball forward towards Harbottle. On the mark to Smith as we keep it nicely. Long ball forward towards Presley. He finds Whitaker, beats his man. Shoots just over the bar. Again he snatched at a clear cut chance and despite having three we yet to score. It's a throw for the left back of Maidenhead just inside his own half. Back to the centre back Hollis who's missed it. Presley gifted a one on one chance. He's in and his shot's been saved. It's another one that's gone begging. And he's just not in goal scoring form at the moment. Though he's certainly been the better of the two strikers today. Smith into the box. Heading on by Presley. Harbottle shot off the line. And it's out to Honda Mark all start again. But it is pinball in the area every time it goes in. Zamura with a long ball down the left to James. The new signing not done much today. He's into the box and clear as far as Honda Mark and again we're going to have to build to the wide area. James puts it in, it's an awful delivery and it's going to go harmlessly out for a goal kick. An hour gone, we're going to have to make some changes, we desperately need to get back into this match. Well, first sub is a bold one. Whitaker, the top scorer in the league's coming off. Missed three clear-cut chances. Archer's on for him. Lopez struggling on the right as well. Adoma's coming on for now. And in five or ten more, we'll make the final change. Well, it's a goal kick for Rams bottom. He goes long downfield towards Presley. Loses out in the air on this occasion, though. Smith does really well to win it back. Lomas over the top. Presley's in one-on-one. -on -one. Surely we'll score one, will we? He's put it in, but now the offside flag's gone up. It just isn't going to be our day. It's ruled out for offside. Such a late flag. And it remains 1-0 to Maidenhead. And we haven't got long to get back into this. Honda Mark's having a poor game, so Whelan's on for him. He's scored a few absolute crackers this season. And we're going to need another one from him now. Fingers crossed he'll be able to deliver on the big stage. If there's any time for the new signing Owen James to pop up, this could very much be the one. We're going to demand more for one more occasion. 20 more minutes to go. Let's see if we can get ourselves at least an equaliser. Long ball forward which is cleared away. Meekins hoofs it long to Cassidy. Been brilliant leading the line for Maidenhead, although he's not had much of a sniff in the second half. Back to Boys the left back. Down the line to Mallon and this is the problem. They've got so much space on the break now. Mallon thankfully he puts his shot wide but another warning sign for the Dorkin defence 15 to go and we don't look like getting back into it if anything Maidenhead are the better side again now and it's Cassidy on the left hand side back to Meekins ball into the unmarked Miller just over the bar and we're going to drop back slightly just to attack him for now we're getting a little bit caught out at the back and we probably need to sit a tiny bit deeper 10 to go is there anything we can do I'm going to have to go back to very attacking now and we're also going to go a little bit more direct just try and get the the ball in behind. We're going to push our two lines forward. We're also going to distribute the ball more quickly. So we're just going to try and get further up the pitch. And hopefully we'll be able to nick goals from somewhere. It's the most crucial five minutes of the season. It's a Rams bottom goal kick. Three minutes of normal time to go. It's a poor kick but it finds Owen James. The new signing in the centre circle. Great ball over to Presley. He's got to score this time. He's saved again. Another clear cut chance. And this one's behind for a corner. And hopefully the delivery will be good. It's Smith who's going to take 
take it. Into the front post to Presley, brings it down and finds him again. Smith with a chance to deliver, but the cross is poor and hacked away. Maidenhead hanging on for dear life as we've hoofed the ball out for a throw in. And it looks like the home side are going to nick it. And we give the ascendancy and the title race back to Chesterfield. How we've lost that game, I don't know. The second half, we had so many clear chances. But in the first half, Maidenhead absolutely battered us. And they deservedly got a 1-0 victory. The lads are motivated as we tell them it's not good enough. But that doesn't really help at this stage. And it looks like we're going to have an extended season. As we're almost certainly going to be in the playoffs now. Chesterfield are going to go back on top if they win. They've had a game in hand to get back to top spot. And again, aside thrown away the tag of favourites, it's almost like neither of us want to win it. Well, look at what the media say. Maidenhead escaped the bottom four. Their goalkeeper was man of the match. Nine shots saved. We can't argue with that. But some of the clear-cut chances we missed were ridiculous. And unfortunately, the title race is out of our hands as a result. Zamura's is knackered, but I think we've actually got a week off now. So hopefully he'll get a chance to recover. And Fernando Morientes is spotted at York Road. He's managing Burton Albion. What on earth's going on there? What a legendary player he was. But now he's down managing in a football league. So an incredibly frustrating game as we waste four or five clear-cut chances again. And that means the title race is out of our hands. So when we come back for the final couple of games of the season, we have no idea whether we're going to be in top spot or not. So I do hope you'll come and join me again for that one, as it's really got tense towards the end of the season. Neither side wants to win it, and we're both faltering. But of course we're going to make sure we battle to the end. But if you did enjoy this episode, and seeing us perhaps make it more tense than we should have, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know in the comments if you've had the same problem. How are we wasting so many clear-cut chances? We've got Whitaker, the top scorer in the league, just spooning chances over the bar. It's made things really difficult for us, and Chesterfield are now back in charge. I'll check very quickly they've got to the FA Trophy final, as that'll give them yet further confidence. They've gone out to York, so unfortunately they're not going to make it. It looks like they've gone behind on penalties. In fact, where is that red line? I can't really work it out. Which side did win the shootout? No, Chesterfield won it. They're in the final. It's displayed a little weirdly there on the schedule. They've got a pretty tough run in. That's the only solace we've got. But it's going to be a really difficult close finish, and I hope we're still in it when we come back for the last one. Subscribe to the channel for daily FM20 content from my two long-term stories. The head coach will be back tomorrow as we come towards the end of season one. A massive thank you to everyone that supported that series so far. And then we'll be back in two days with Dorking Wanderers and hopefully we'll still be embroiled in a title race. Can we get over the line and win it? Let me know in the comments what you think and we'll see how many of you are right in a couple of days' time. But I'm certainly not too impressed on what I've seen today. Then finally, I'm also part of a podcast that does match day vlogs and interviews. There's a link to our latest vlog in the eye above from the Wickham v Tranmere FA Cup tie a couple of weeks back. And then we're also available on Spotify. We've got interviews with people such as former Premier League referee Bobby Madley and also Mark Palios, the Tranmere chairman, which we recorded at that match a couple of weeks ago. So if that's your sort of thing, then do give it a try, especially if you love lower league football as much as me. But a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support with the series. And I hope to see you next time for one of the biggest episodes of the series so far as we try to hang on in this desperately close title race.